Hi everyone, my name is Morgan Lawrence. I'm a program manager for Tulsa Debate League, and today we will be having our public forum debate judge training for the 2023-2024 season. Our topic this year for elementary is Oklahoma should ban standardized testing for elementary students. The affirmative team will argue that elementary should that Oklahoma should ban standardized testing for elementary students, and the negative team will argue that Oklahoma should not ban standardized testing for elementary students. So there will be two students on the affirmative team and two students on the negative team. Job number one is to keep the trains running on time. Now, here is the schedule and the structure for an elementary round. You'll see we start with the 1AC, the first affirmative constructive, which is a pre-written speech that will introduce arguments for the resolution. The first speaker from the affirmative team has four minutes to get this done, followed by a cross-examination. Now I'd like to note that all of our cross-examinations in elementary are what is considered open, which means that um, both members of a team can ask both members of the other team a question. We do this just to make things more equitable, to make it a little easier if kids are really struggling. You know, we're just happy that they're here and doing something that challenges them. Now, after the cross-examination, the first negative speaker will have their pre-written speech in which they introduce arguments against the resolution. Again, they have four minutes to do so, followed by a cross-examination, and then our rebuttals. Most of these rebuttals will be written on the spot. You will see a couple that are primarily pre-written. Um, right before rebuttals is a great time to encourage students to use their two minutes of prep time that each team gets. In the rebuttal, they'll extend the affirmative case and rebut the negative arguments. Then they'll have a cross X. The second rebuttal, same thing, it's just extending the negative case and rebutting what the affirmative has said in their case. Another cross examination. And then we'll get to summaries, which is a lot like what a summary is that kids learn about in elementary school, just summarizing everything they've said before. They'll continue to extend, expand on, and refine those arguments. This is a short one. They have two minutes to do that. The negative will have their turn at the summary, and then the focus, which is really just a honed-in version of that summary where they're defending their case and focusing on two to three of the most important issues, most important points that they've made. And like I said before, each team has two minutes of prep time. Encourage them to take that. Prep time is gold. Job number two, the ballot. Now, your role as a judge is to give the round your full attention. Please silence your cell phone before beginning the round. You're obviously welcome to keep time on your phones. I know most of us do. Um, just please don't take any personal calls during the duration of the rounds. They're fairly short, and you'll be able to deal with any emergencies or anything that come up right after the round is over. Make sure the round stays on schedule by starting on time and keeping accurate time for speeches, cross acts, and prep time. So when the, you enter your room, have the students enter, give them just a minute or so to get their bearings together and then ask if everyone's ready to begin and that'll keep things going on time. Um, make a decision on who won the round based on which team did a better job of proving their position, not based on personal opinion. So whoever convinced you that they won, that should be the winner. Provide each team with constructive feedback after the round. We like to keep this very brief in order to keep our tournaments going on time. At this level, if you can just say that everyone did a great job, that you were impressed, saw some good things, um, that would be awesome. And then put the rest of your feedback on that ballot. Now I will say with the ballots, do not put anything that you wouldn't want the student to see on there. We do give these to our coaches and then they let their students see so they know what to work on for their next tournament. And if any issues or rule challenges come up during the round, contact tournament director Chris Cook at 918-743-8024. If you could take a moment to save this in your phones, that would be amazing. Ballot expectations. When you arrive, check in at the ballot table with me to see if you have a ballot assigned to you. If you do have a ballot assigned, pick it up and head to your room in a timely manner so rounds can start on time. And yes, you do have time to go to the restroom first. I do get asked that a lot. If you do not have a ballot assigned, just stay close to the ballot table. Um, we might need to reassign a ballot to you and that does happen fairly often. 
after the round, return your completed ballot to the ballot table as soon as possible and check to see if you have a ballot for second round. So you may want to write a lot. That's great. Just do that as quickly as you can so we can keep the tournament going and move on to the next round. We can't move on until all the ballots are in. So after each round is complete, you'll cast your ballot for the winning team by writing their team code and whether they were affirmative or negative on the appropriate lines. You will also assign speaker points to each speaker ranging from 26 to 30. On this scale, a score of 26 would mean the speaker demonstrated below average speaking skills, while 30 would mean the speaker demonstrated near perfect speaking skills. You can use decimal points when assigning speaker points. I love to. You can assign the same number of points to multiple students. If the winning team received the lowest speaker point average in the round, please check the low point win box. So I do want to say that 26 is something we rarely give um, in elementary just because it can be a bit discouraging and we're just really glad these kids are here doing an activity that promotes their literacy and that helps them with a lot of areas in their life. So even giving like a 26.5 or using the decimals there would be great. And a 30 is obviously the best round you've seen maybe ever. Here's an example of a blank ballot. Now, the first thing to do is to make sure the correct teams and students are in the round. Sometimes kids go to the wrong room and that can make things confusing, could even make us think someone's missing. So just verify that you have the right students in the room. Um, if you have the wrong students in the room, please call Chris Cook or send the students back out um, to the main holding area and we'll direct them to their correct room. You'll see the team code is right next to each side. Um, it's the first two letters of each person's last name. And write the students' names in the order they speak here. I always ask, you know, who's the first affirmative? It's a great chance to learn names, and that's where you'll write them. On the right-hand side is where you'll assign speaker points. Remember, you can use decimals. And the low point win box is if the winning team had the lowest speaker points average, which isn't super common, but it does happen. And when the round ends, write the side, whether it's AF or NAG, in the four-letter team code of your winning team. Make sure you sign your ballot and return to the ballot table. And then also include a reason for your decision. Um, so again, feedback is great. That's what these students use to improve. And just once again, a friendly reminder to remember that they will be seeing this. Now, if there's something you're not comfortable writing, but you would like to tell somebody, please let me know. I can connect you with their coach. Here's an example of a wonderful ballot. As you will see, everyone has their points filled out. We know who the first and second speakers were. We have a winner declared on the affirmative side and a signature with some great feedback for each competitor. This is a bad ballot. They didn't declare a winner. They didn't give anyone points. We know the negative one, but we're not sure how many points they had can't really read the signature and there's no comment or reason for decision. It just says oral, which takes up time and gets the tournament off track. So we do want to have written feedback instead of giving it in person. And of course, our points and the speaker, a winner needs to be declared. Lots needs to be filled out here. Job number three is be kind. Now, I wanna go back to be kind for a moment. Please remember the reason these kids are here, the reason that you are here. TDL is all about kindness, all about allowing and providing a safe space for these students. So just show up with a smile. Smile goes a long way um, and we'll really appreciate that. Now, in the unlikely event of an emergency, TDL will contact coaches and judges by text with instructions using either talking points or a remind text system. If you have an emergency in your round, please contact Chris at the number that we all put in our phones earlier, 918-743-8024. If there is an intruder, please lock the doors, move away from doors and windows, and await instructions. If there's a tornado, follow instructions posted in the classroom, which should be on the wall, and or instructions from TDL. If there's a fire, follow, follow instructions posted in classrooms and or provided by TDL.
Thank you so much for being here and for volunteering as a judge at our tournament. Um, from the bottom of my heart and all of our hearts, we could not do this without you. You are making a tremendous difference in the lives of young people, and we thank you wholeheartedly. We could not make this wouldn't happen without you. It just literally isn't possible without you. If any issues or rule challenges come up during the round, again, contact Chris Cook at the number we talked about earlier. We'll address the problem and move forward. Um, but in most cases, we advise you to continue the round to keep the tournament running on time. All right, that completes our judge training. I'm so excited to see the awesome ballots and to hear great stories from your rounds. Thank you so much for being here and I hope you have fun.